Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Stranded Survivors. My name is Matt and I am one of your co-hosts. My name is Jericho and Matt and I are back together. You already know. Let's go. Um, welcome to the Stranded Survivors podcast. Hope you guys are having a great day. Matt, how are you doing today? Man, today is a good day. We had uh what's the what's this holiday? Is it are we is it Labor Day? Labor Day. Man, okay, so I don't want to sound like a rascally goofball, but I always confuse Labor Day and Memorial Day, not with the Me meaning, too. but with, you know, where they fall on the calendar. So, like, <laughs> yep. I always get confused. But, you know, it was it was an all right day. Extended weekend, which is great. We closed down the mm-hmm. uh, office and uh, had this little, like, thing in town today where we had, like, I don't know, vendors. And mm-hmm. it was this cutesy little small town thing that was going on and you know the kids got their face painted they had fun so that was all that but the school semester has started up and man I thought that I was busy in the summer semester and thought that I was stressing last semester my guy I'm taking two additional classes this semester just because I hate myself apparently (laughs) yeah that's pretty busy to be honest I'm rock I'm rocking out 15 credits yeah but, That's uh, wild. you know, the the light at the end of the tunnel is that I'll be getting my degree next spring, and then here comes master's classes. So, you know, it's all part of the long game. But long story short, I blabbed a whole lot to say. Things are great, man. How about you? You know, good. Um, So I'm next week I'm actually going on a camping trip. So, um, you know, 9th through the 13th, I will not be here for anybody. So there will probably not be an episode that week. And um, unless also, I go rogue again, unless Matt goes rogue, if Matt goes rogue, if you want him to go rogue, you know, just let him know he's more than willing to do so. But um, other than that, um, hopefully after the 13th, I'll be working Monday through Friday again. Um, so I'll be able to have every weekend off, which will be nice for many things. But um, yeah, man, other than that, I've been doing good, just living it up, working, doing the normal thing, man. Hey, sometimes that's the way to go, you know? Keep things consistent and on a nice little flow, moving forward, and things are good, sounds like. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, man, and I do have a question, though. I, you know, I know we are talking about ARC a little bit here today, but, like, what can you tell the people, like, what's your plan once you get your degree? Like, are you going to stay at the job where you're at, or do you have, like, an idea of what you want to do? <coughs> My guy, so I... I'm the most confused human being on the planet, and I went through literally like 96% of the teaching program. I did my student teaching. I passed the MTTC, like the Michigan teacher's exam. I was a full-fledged teacher, did it for a few years, and the school that I was at was such a unique case that it made me hate teaching to the point where I'm going back to school, getting this degree, and then we're going to be a therapist, man. I'm going to go into the master's in counseling and therapy, and I'm going to open my own private practice therapy one day. Wow. That'd be cool. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of things in my days, and uh, all of that experience has led me back to believe that every human being needs a therapist. There is absolutely no shame in therapy, and... Uh, a lot of lives would be saved if every single person went to a, you know to therapy every now and then. Yeah, I actually fully support that. To be honest, I agree, and I feel like you do have you know the experience slash expertise, whatever you want to call it, to you know be able to help people out. Gosh, you and me both, my guy. We've seen some things in our days, but hey, that is you know neither here nor there. But long story short, yeah, everyone needs a good therapist, and there's a shortage in the town that we live in. There's um probably only three or four practices that are going on and they're all pretty solidly booked so there's constantly a need and uh hey you you can never have enough therapists in the world so i'm just trying to do my part but man what about what about you have you ever like because i know you talked at one point about you know getting a degree and doing stuff like are you are you content because i know you're moving up where you're at so are you content right now or do you have like plans in the future to do other things and to be honest with you, I'm pretty content where I'm at at the moment anyways. I 
if I had a motivation, I would love to get a degree. Like I, you know, I just want to start a small business one day. Like if I, you know, won the mega millions jackpot, I would definitely start a few businesses. I don't know what they would be because, you know, like when you're one of those people that want to do a business, you just look up every and anything. And then you're like, wow, this, 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 this. And there's like 20 different things you want to do. I don't know which one I would enjoy, but there's like 20 different things I'd like to start. But otherwise, no, I'm pretty content where I'm at at the moment. Dude, I know you just said you don't know what you would do, but 20 different things? What are like, give me give me your top three. If I handed you a check for a million dollars right now, I was like, ha, ta, 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 let's, let's start a business, huh? What would you choose? So I would probably do like a, um, what is it? I've been looking into, man. There's so many. I'm just going to name a bunch. These aren't like my top three, but I'll name a couple of them. So clothing, um, stickers, um, like resin. Have you ever, you know what resin is? Like the uh, like plastic press stuff. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, pretty much. Like you, yeah, you mold it and well, it molds whatever. Yes. Uh okay. And then three <laughs> D printing. Like if I knew how to graphic like that three D printing stuff. So you know, like a uh, art character for a board game or something. You know, stuff like that. Um, and then what else? There mm-hmm. was there was another one. I can't remember what it was. I don't know. Oh, dude, and then like something like a children's book, vending machines, uh, gumball machines. Dude, I got I got ideas, man. Yeah, my guy's going some. Let's get this guy on Shark Tank, please. <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome. Other than that, man. But either way, we're really here for Ark. If you listen through the first, you know, seven minutes here about us, we appreciate you because. <laughs> yeah. You know, we were just chatting. Um, But Matt, you got it pulled up. What's up next? So let's keep it easy and get classic. We are going to roll into the Dino Dossier of the Week. And in the spirit of aberration and, you know, the wonderful talk that Hop and Jericho had last week, we are going to do the Bulb Dog. Now, you know... In case, for those of us inquiring minds were asking, nobody was asking, but I'm going to say it anyway, it's a fantasy creature. The bulb dog did not really exist. You know, it's not one of those actual fossilized creatures that we're ever going to find, but it is a synapsids, whatever that is. That's fun to say. It's an herbivore with a passive temperament. And, oh, I super scrolled. Its species name is Microluminous Globulus. It is from an unknown time period because it's not real. Um, Like I said, an mm-hmm. herbivore with a passive temperament. Microluminous globulus is best described as a slobbering, roly-poly ball of affection. Just like its kin, it is completely harmless, despite its pronounced fangs. So if, it, blah, blah, blah. so if a survivor sees one running towards them, they should prepare to be licked, not bitten. Unfortunately, being so ugly that your cue is not an effective means of self-defense, which lands it near the bottom of the food chain. Its charged light may intimidate some predators, but it attracts just as many. Domesticated While Microluminous Globulus has skin reminiscent of lizards and amphibians, its behavior is incredibly similar to its common canine. This has made it a particularly popular choice as a companion and a source of charge light. But remember, whatever shoulder you rested on will be covered in drool within minutes. Love, Helena. Man. Drool or not, I'm all for it. Bulb dog. Yeah. That thing looks like a bulldog had a baby with an anglerfish. <laughs> I mean, you might be right, to be honest. I don't yeah, know how, but... It's a, <laughs> it's, it's a real freak of nature, but I want to hug it nonetheless. I don't care if it drools <laughs> on me. <laughs> Man, yeah, no, the bulb dog's actually very useful with its light, um, be able to get rid of the nameless. Oh, yeah, yeah. And to be honest with you, I think that the bulb dog is probably... Oop, choking it up, hold on. I lived okay the bulb dog is honestly probably in my opinion the second cutest charge pet after the feather light yeah the feather light's actually really cool yeah I'm a sucker for feather lights they got so many cool color patterns but you know bulb dogs are pretty awesome as well but 
like we all know, I'm a real sucker for colors and mutations and stuff like that, so the bulb dog doesn't quite do it as much as the feather light does for me, but it's still pretty sick. Yeah, I agree. Um, So what we got next, though, sorry, I know that was quick, but I just wanted to get into the thing, is uh, Matt, you know, you've been a little, both of us have been a little untouched with Ark, you know, as of lately playing different games. I've been playing a lot of Black Ops 6 lately because it's on the beta. Did you know that? Yeah, I saw that it was on the beta, but I haven't had a chance to play it yet because I keep telling myself it's going to disappear soon. So I don't know when the actual date is, but I keep telling myself not to try it because it's going to end soon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's tomorrow, so you might not want to try it. Boo! Well, it's for the best because I've heard very mixed reviews on it, but um, all in all, I've actually heard pretty negative reviews on it at the end of the day. I mean, the thing is, you, just, you know, a lot of people love nostalgic Call of Duty, and, you know, you're never going to get that. But, um, yeah, I've played a little bit. Um, it's okay. I mean, it's not my favorite. There's a couple of the maps. Like, I can't stand, always in Call of Duty, the spawning is atrocious on some of the maps. The guns, I don't know. I mean, it's okay. Like, don't get me wrong. It's not, you know, like the other games that I used to love, but it's not bad so far. Of course, totally understandable. Man, unpopular yeah. opinion, and I'm going to get, you know, crucified for it in the Call of Duty community if anyone's listening, but I think that Advanced Warfare is one of the better Call of Duties ever made because it was so dynamic and unique. It was a total game changer and added a whole new dimension to the gameplay, and I personally think that Advanced Warfare 2 would be a good way to revitalize the franchise. Yeah, I mean, I'll really quickly say on that that I, at the time, thought Advanced Warfare was terrible, but now I'm like, no, this dude, like you said, it brought it just brought a lot of unique perspectives and different ways to be able to, you know, actually shoot someone. So Yeah, absolutely. And I got pretty good with boot stomping, so it made me feel pretty <laughs> solid to equip that uh the laser shotgun with uh whatever I forget what it was that made the the lasers stronger and I would jetpack up above a building, boot stomp on the first person to come through the door and then just slide through and shotgun everyone in the room. Oh my goodness, it was such a good time. <laughs> but um so with Arc uh September fourth uh, so very, very soon, it's like two days actually from the day that we're talking about it, is Aberration. Um, a lot of people are excited for this just because it's, you know, a different map um, and different things like that. And Hop and I did talk about this, but something that they did announce in their re recent crunch was the AMD Fidelity FX frame interpolation. I don't know if I said that all right, but either way. Um and this is what it says is this is working on all platforms across all hardware. So with the aberration launch launch, players can expect to see an approximately 80% performance gain on consoles and PCs, assuming they weren't already using the frame generation. And then um, there were also, as we all have known for quite a while, upgrading to Unreal Engine 5.4. And they're saying it is mostly complete. They're still putting it through the internal QA process. Um, and they're currently targeting between October and November 15th, which is like, you know, Unreal Engine supposed to be able to, you know, a lot of the people are like, oh, my PC doesn't run it, even though I have like a $2,000 PC, like by all of, you know, these updates they're making, it's supposed to actually make the game playable. And, you know, even for us council players should make it better. That is very exciting to hear all around quality of life. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, you know, I am excited about that. I think that if this just would have been introduced in the start of the game, we would not be having the problem that we're having now because a lot of ARC news and different things like that, I mean, you, we've talked about this for a very long time, Matt, but, you know, a lot of people are very upset with um, Wildcard in general just about, you know, multiple different things. We already know that, but a lot of people, um, they... Did a little, like, QA thing, I would say, with the company's owners of um, Snail Games. And Snail Games, the owner guy, was like, you know, to be honest with you, uh, pretty much what he said without saying it was, Arc 2 is not going to happen unless Survival Ascended has great performance. Which I'm telling you right now, it does not have great performance. 
So I don't think we're going to see ARC 2. Yeah, man, you heard it here first, folks, and I think, unfortunately, Jericho's correct. We've been sort of insinuating that that is a real possibility for quite a while now, and a lot of it, you know, we had insinuated was hanging in the threads financially, and I think that that is basically them, without saying we're going broke, saying we're going broke is kind of what it sounds like. Mm Mm-hmm. I really hope it's not the case because I know that so many people have worked so hard on this project and even though I'm not like playing it consistently the way that I'm sure the devs would like and that I would like as well, like it's still a very decently done game. It still looks nice. It runs smooth. Like I think, unfortunately, they made a couple poor business decisions and I am by no means, you know, I'm by no means a CEO and I would not have made better decisions. I'm not claiming that I would. I'm not trying to be an <laughs> armchair CEO here, but like from from an outsider hindsight is 2020 perspective, they made some silly choices and I think that we're now seeing the consequences of that in full effect and unfortunately it sounds like it's going to have a pretty big implication on the project. Yeah. And you know, that's it's very sad cuz you know like even I seen a thing earlier um for like twitch numbers you know like you know how like did you know you can like search up how many people like watch arc on twitch uh i i knew you could but i like hadn't really thought much about it to be honest with you yeah so somebody posted the other day actually that um there was very minimal amount i think it was like literally under two three hundred people like i'm pretty sure it was under that like amount of people watching people play arc on twitch yes i know there's youtube and, you know, different things like that that people stream on. But, like, that's very low numbers. And the only things that's even doing semi-good at all in ARC is, like, videos. And they're still not, you know, doing the numbers that they used to. Like, I mean, what? I know it's, what, Monday right now. But, I mean, 11,000 comments or 11,000 views on the last Community Crunch. I know it's only a few days. Don't get me wrong, right? But, I mean, that's that's not a lot of people, Matt. No. No, it certainly isn't. Because, I mean, if we're being honest, do you re- – like, when we first started – first off, Matt, we're almost at a year, man. It's like a, Let's go. It's like a month and six days, man, and we're at a year, which is very exciting. Um, But, I mean, when we were looking at everything, like, dude, the numbers used to be crazy. And now they're not. Yeah, that's kind of a concern for me as well cuz like it's the numbers don't lie and those are very real statistics that have very heavy weight to them analytically and I mean it is not looking good, man. I'm just going to be totally transparent and say that it just in general is not looking good. I agree with you. I mean, like let's look at this. We're on Community Crunch 425. I'm just going to go back to I guess last year, what, what is it right now, Matt? It's September. So October. So we'll go to September, whatever. We'll go to some September date. Okay. Um, community crunch 375, 50,000, uh, 40,000, 30,000, uh, 28,000, 67,000, 52, 56, like, Matt, the numbers have dwindled. That's that's very sad. But, like, on the other note, there are people like me and possibly you. I'm not going to speak for you, but there's people like me right now that are, you know, been there, done that, and it got burned out real quick, and, like, there's not anything exciting and new that's drawing me back to the game away from seven days to die because you know seven days to die is like a brand new game to me compared to what it used to look like so i'm i'm exploring and learning a lot of new things every single time i play that game and i don't have that experience with arc so like i'm kind of waiting for something you know for them to release for conversation them to release aberration and have us get in there and be like holy crap this is not aberration this is aberration like this is it's the same but it's not the same and we have to we have to relearn everything again would be great but i'm just not getting that same sentiment if that makes sense 
Oh, uh, you know, that does actually make sense. Like, I mean, like, if you don't have something cool to announce, why would you even go look at the crunch, to be honest? Yeah, and I mean, I my mentality at this point, we have a very, very awesome community that is very active and talks a lot about ARC and things like that, so I'm getting my news through them. I'm, I'm perusing on the uh, Discord there, and I'm getting my information from them. I'm getting my information from TikTok, and like I'm, I'm waiting for something that makes me say, ha ha ha, and I've got the game reinstalled. I uninstalled it for like 36 hours and then reinstalled it. Yeah, <laughs> you did. Yeah, I didn't have the heart to leave it off. As soon as I uninstalled it, I had instant regret. And was like, oh man, I kind of want to play again. So then I reinstalled it and was like, I don't know if I want to play right now. <laughs> yep. I feel that, to be honest with you. I got to re-download it. I just have been addicted to Black Ops 6 college football. But we got to get you back on, man. We got to get back on. At least play it. See, see if we can reignite our thing. We'll have to play Yeah, we got to. We've definitely got to. I think that it would be more fun if I had people to play with, but Steven is, like, the only person that I ever game with now, and mm-hmm. he isn't that interested in ARC, to be honest with you. He played it for me to support me. So with him being yep. like, oh, thank you, God, you don't want to play tonight? Okay, let's play Seven Days to Die. I'm like, oh, okay, if you're going to twist my arm, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I understand that. So maybe but- if we... uh get together and we do something fun, we have an event, we do something, some shenanigans in some way, shape, or form, then maybe that'll revitalize things. Yeah, you're probably right, to be honest with you. Um, So, also coming, that I know that you didn't know, we did talk about this a little bit last week, is the Cosmo, which is the fluffy spider. And so the spider is like this cute, supposed to be cute little spider that you can hop around on, right? And, like, whatever, go somewhere to whatever. But this little spider, Matt, from what I understand, you can ride it. But you can also, like, it turns small, kind of like the pyro. And it goes on your wrist. And you can shoot it like a Spider-Man web shooter. What? That is pretty sweet. Not going to lie to you. So, yeah, you can... But I think you do have to have Bob's Tall Tales or whatever, of course. Which I do. <laughs> and uh, But yeah, you can like shoot yourself like Spider-Man around, and then you can get your eggs and everything so much easier, like your Rock Drake eggs. That is amazing. Yeah, that's what, I've, that's what I'm saying, man. I actually, I think that's very interesting. Yeah, that's super cool. It reminds me... Have you seen? Oh uh, man, it's gonna. I'm gonna have to look it up while I ramble here. Uh, there's some Adam Sandler movie on Netflix with a, a spider where he's like an astronaut and this like weird space traveling spider gets on his spaceship to like investigate him. Have you seen that? <laughs> no, dude. It's uh, Spaceman. It's called Spaceman. It is a sci-fi drama. Yeah, there's a giant, like a little fluffy jumping spider, but I mean, it's like bigger than him. And it gets on his ship and it travels through space and it is attracted to him by, I don't remember what it was, you'll have to watch the movie. But like, long story short, it is this hour long thing about him getting to know and like emotionally connecting with this spider that's laywaying or whatever the word is, stowawaying on his spaceship with him. It's the craziest mm-hmm. movie. Very confusing. Huh. I might have to watch it, man. Yeah, please do, and then please explain to me what the heck's going on, because it was a good movie, but it was confusing, and the whole time I was just waiting for the spider to, like... Him and the spider were, were getting along very well, but my fear of spiders was making it not <laughs> enjoyable, so I was like, all right, now you can stab him. Squish him. Get him. Go get him. Stab him. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's funny. Um, well, Matt, something really quickly, I guess, or if you want to call it quick or not, um, I just want have a question is for you. Okay. In a short answer, I know it probably won't be short. It never is. So it is what it is. But if you had to help Ark right now, if you wanted to grow it 
you're not going to probably grow it to the player base you know that it was that it used to be at what do you think is something that either art can do or like what do you think we can do as a community or art can do to be able to build this game back up to where it once was i know i've asked that to you before but i just want to you know kind of see what you're thinking um to be honest with you i think i sort of hinted at it a little bit earlier but i really think that they need a a totally game shaking change you know what i mean like they're re-releasing these maps and they're fantastic and they're doing a great job with it but I think that maybe it would be beneficial for them to, like I said, re-release Aberration and have it be totally different. Um, we need something that's going to keep people guessing, exploring, and learning. Because I feel like the art community has pretty much mastered this game. And I feel like everybody's just sort of biding their time waiting on uh, Arc 2 to be released. So... With them saying, like, hey, by the way, we might not release Arc 2, then I think we're going to see people biding their time less. And in the meantime, we need something... You know, they almost, almost did it with the uh, Bob's Tales and the Train and stuff like that, but it just wasn't game-changing enough. Game-altering, yes, but not game-changing. Yeah, that's... I understand that. That was not a short answer. I failed the assignment. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I thought that was a short answer, Matt. Was it? Oh, heck yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. You did a good job. A plus. Do you have Do you have an answer for that? Because I feel like, you know, what are your What's your insights? Um, you know, uh, of course, if they could, uh, demolish almost everything, um, go back to normal arc at this point. Get rid of ASA because there was no point for ASA with what they're doing. Like you said, um, go back to arc, make the graphics and everything better, and update the game. And then work on Arc 2 because we needed a completely different game from the start. We didn't need the pretty much the same game with some of the most of the same problems, even more problems. Um, but if I'm saying right now what I think they could do is potentially, uh, you know, continue partnering with these communities, you know, like Power Rangers, maybe Spider-Man, you know, stuff like that. Partner with them. Um, I think they could, you know... Somebody made a good point, right? Like with that Twitch comment that I was telling you that Twitch was there was not a lot of viewers, you know, compared to these other games. It's because, you know, Arc doesn't give anything for watching streams. Like, you know, like one if you were getting cool cosmetic or, you know, maybe like, you know, just an upgrade your cosmetic or something every single time you watch a certain amount of time of a streamer or you watch a certain amount of Arc. Are, um Are there other games that do that? Yeah, from what I understand, a lot of, like, survival games do this already. Really? Yeah. Um. So, I don't know how that works, but that's what I've seen somebody say. Um. So, I think that's a great idea. And, I mean, like somebody else said, like, we need to get bigger creators involved in this game to get it out there more. Like, not, you know, people know ARK, but they don't know ARK, you know? Yeah, um... Ooh, you know what they could do? Food for thought mm. here. What if, I mean, it's tough because Madden has the ability for them to be like, oh yeah, we're going to have these two football players play each other in a, in a match. But like, Ark doesn't necessarily have that capability. But if they were to get two people that, you know, somehow connected to, I'm try, I'm trying to think of how to word this. If we got a, for conversation, this is very, very stupid, but I don't know why this is the first two names that popped into my head, but if we had a Jake Paul, Mike Tyson, who can build the best base type of stream, like, people are going to eat that crap up, you know what I mean? We need people that are going to get attention to be playing the game and streaming themselves talking about it, and, like, I feel like that would probably snag a lot of attention. Yeah, I, I think you're right, to be honest. We need that prominent – we need those prominent people to be able to actually say something about the game. Absolutely. Um, But, yeah. Um, Also, so this is – you know, we only talked a little bit about ARC, so sorry for that. But um, something I did want to bring up before I forget because I love to forget things. Um, It's probably my superpower at this <laughs> point. Um. 
I would like to, you know, announcement uh, is that Matt and I, you know, as you probably already know, there really wasn't an episode last week again, and you're probably like, wow, these guys are lame, you know, but no, um, from now on with, you know, Matt's busy schedule, my super busy schedule also, um, I think we're going to be, well, we are, there's no thinking, we're going to be switching to every other week is what you can expect from us for, you know, the podcast, um, but there also may be things in between, you know, you may get lucky, you may get a whole month worth of videos, um, or you just may get the, you know, the two a month, but either way, you will get two episodes a month as of now, um, if that changes, we'll update you, of course, but yeah, for now, every other week, we'll be getting an episode um, out, and, you know, the other weeks, who knows, surprise, maybe not surprise, you just never know, <laughs> um, but yeah, just wanted to update you guys on that, um, I don't know, I mean, that's all, you know, it's all I can think of, I just didn't want to forget. Yeah, that's important to mention, and it stinks on one hand, because I know every other week is not what people are looking for, um, and that might be you know, unfortunate, but my counter to that is that every other week is something that we can right now commit to. That's something that I know for a fact I can squeeze in, you know, one out of 14 days into homework and tests and my family and work and all that fun stuff. So like it's consistency is what we're aiming for here. And you guys have been you know, I, I'm sick of hearing me say we're going to be more consistent, so I'm sure you guys are too, but this is a corrective action step that we are taking to be more consistent for you guys. Yeah, and like Matt said, it's just the consistency. I, you know, we have been saying for a long time, we're going to be consistent. We're going to do this, 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 and this. And it might have happened for a little spree, you know, whatever, um, stuff like that. Um. And then I do want to leave the people with a cliffhanger just because I think it will be fun. Right, Matt? You want, you want to hear this Absolutely. one? So, you know, update also is, you know, with, like I said last week with the Patreon coming down, stuff will be happening with the servers. Maybe we won't have two servers. Maybe we will. You never know. Maybe we'll have one, zero, 20. Who knows, right? Either way. But there will be stuff coming with the server, so if you do play the server, just be aware. Just wanted to let you know. You know, who knows? It's going to be a surprise. Could be a good, could be a bad one. But um, <laughs> other than that, that's I have to leave you with that little cliffhanger. Is it a cliffhanger or is that anxiety? Yeah, that's probably anxiety. Maybe not a cliffhanger, but you know. Everybody's like, oh, God, wait, what? <laughs> um, But yeah, guys. I um I got nothing left, Matt. Is there anything you got? Man, I could, you know, I could do seven or eight episodes on uh Seven Days to Die. So if you want to know about Seven Days to Die, then I got you, my man. But as far as what the people came for with art content, unfortunately, I uh my well of information is a little stagnant at the moment. Rightfully so, one hundred percent understand that. Um, well, guys, if you did listen this far, you know, out of the, you know, 30-ish minute episode here, you got about 15 minutes of art content. <laughs> so, you know, I apologize. But you know what? The rest of it I'd like to think was like, you know, it was fun. I had fun. So hopefully you guys have fun listening to it. Exactly. That's what matters. We had fun. We hope you guys enjoyed, Uh, you know, I guess... I don't know what the question necessarily is going to be. Um, if it's going to be, did you know you enjoy this kind of episode um, with just a little art content? I don't know what it's going to be, man. You know, we'll figure it out as it comes because that's just how we roll sometimes. But either way, highly, truly appreciate all of you guys for joining us, especially if you joined us for this whole episode. Um, you guys are truly amazing. Um, I know we say that all the time, and I truly, we mean it. Um, we, you know, Matt and I are going to continue to try to be more active in the discord. I hope you guys do see that. Um, so thank you guys all for joining us. And that is all for me. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. And, uh, you know, we're going to get through it. We're going to, we're going to be more consistent. We're going to get some more content out. 
and hopefully, uh, you know, my wishes, I, I know that we just said goodbye to everybody and then I'm over here doing a whole new segment, but like my wishes for this is that we can expand out to other games and build the community and continue to do pretty awesome things. So I would like to think that this is not the beginning of the end, but maybe the beginning of a pivot. And there is your cliffhanger for the end of the episode. We appreciate you all being here and hope you guys have a fantastic week. Goodbye, survivors. Bye-bye.